the end of the road, everybody coming to jails and prisons. The goal is how do we help them get out and reenter? That's the big question. That's the big goal. There's so many things a lot of them are dealing with. If there's anything the evidence says that works, it's education, ideally educational attainment. And I like this little thing here. It kind of gives you an idea of what, um, uh, how much money can be saved if, you, if someone is actually has an investment into education, which is cool. These are some of the outcomes. And it's amateurish, but, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a PowerPoint superstar, as you can see. But educational attainment, as we say in a lot of literature, makes some money, maybe a homeowner, better health care, all these positive things, educational attainment. And this is an assumption that, that educational attainment, you know, comes with us on basic proficiencies and literacy. My folks that I deal with are on this side. And that ends up being much more complicated than what that slide looks like. What's really interesting, the predominant population I have is black. And what uh, I could talk about if I got another 30 minutes somewhere, most of those black folks that you see are dark-skinned black folks. Somebody's got to look at that. You go to a prison in jail, there's going to be a predominantly black population, 50, 60, 70 percent, or probably where I'm at, closer to 80 percent. And if you sit back there and do the eye test, most, most of them are dark skin, and somebody needs to look at that one. Starting the fourth grade a little earlier, the signs are there. Signs are there. Low proficiency in reading for whatever the causes are. A lot of those kids aren't doing well. They associate with each other, and differential association kicks in, which means not doing good in school is what we're all about. Leads to problem behavior. A scary slide, for whatever reason, close to what, one out of every four black males that are in the school system is likely to be suspended by the time they're out of high school. And we'll just keep going with this because this is what I have to deal with. Disciplinary actions, for whatever the reasons are in Virginia, <coughs> out of school suspensions of blacks if compared to whites almost triples. This is part of the barriers or constraints or factors that have impacted the education or lack of education of the folks I deal with. And I've got to accommodate for that. Age, criminal record, time in prison, all comes down to this. And when I say illiterate, I'm talking about people who don't have the proficiency probably to read anything close to a training manual or to read NA book or the AA book or go to some of these recovery and reentry programs that requires you to write something. I'm saying at least 50%. If there's too many people or so in, 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 uh, in prisons, at least one million are probably illiterate. This is the elephant in the room. So what do I do? What do I try to do? When it comes to prison or jail education programs, at best we could probably accommodate at most about 10% of the population. And that 10% of the population we can accommodate, the purpose of that is, is to try to help them get their GED, high school diploma, or put them on a track to continue post-secondary education. The TRIO program here at VCU is wonderful. We're working with also Jay, uh, uh, Jay Sarge. We have a track for those that are ready. But I would tell you, in prisons and jails, you're lucky if you have 5 or 10% of your population, maybe 15%, who actually can benefit from those programs. So what do you do with the rest of them? What do you do with maybe 50% who are illiterate? who aren't going to get the benefit of remedial programs because of the investment. I had to come up with a, a secondary objective, come up with education programs that are pretty much designed to create positive learning experiences for somebody who might have been suspended from school, 
told they were learning disabled, dropped out third, fourth, or fifth grade, coming back to school, coming to the jail saying, I want to get my GED. And we recognize that it may take a while, so what can I do for them? This is part of my model for you wonderful people to, to investigate and try to, or try to work with. I have learned that if I can help create programs in my collaborations that provide sessions or even classes that have these themes, self-discovery, self-expression, artworks, existential, meaning, purpose, value, because these individuals are asking questions like that. Let's leverage those type of themes to get them into a more positive learning experience, because a lot of them probably have had that. If you're teaching or tutoring, you have to be in a developmental role, which means you have to nurture, you have to caretake. You have to make it safe for them to say, I don't know. You have to make it safe for them to say, I still don't understand. And you have to recognize when they do understand to get something, you have got to reinforce, reinforce it. That's a developmental process. A lot of times, they're going to get content very slowly. So the most important thing is going to be your relationship. You may be the first person they ever had a nurturing, supportive relationship with, or the second person. And they will come back to your sessions for the purpose of that relationship, and you leverage that relationship to create a positive experience. Now, there is um, a field-dependent, field-independent cognitive learning styles, and you can read about that, but those folks are field-dependent, which means if I'm up here talking, giving you ideas, or giving you something to read, if you're field-independent, you can easily uh, have the facility to grasp the main idea, to get the content, and go on to the next. Field-dependent folks need more work. They work best in one-on-one -on -one environments, small groups, and you have to really work to help them understand or get some of the main ideas. Help them understand the context, the background. And if you can do all those things successfully, you're going to be in a position of creating a positive experience, which is what I try to do. But there's still something that's left. I can do this for them while they're on the inside. And I could provide remedial programs, the REED program here, R-E-A-D program, if you need it to stick with. There's a wonderful woman in Donnie Strumbo, and they, they're, she's coming over starting a remedial re reading program for individuals with fifth grade literacy or less. So there's a line for that. And if you want to help us out, check her out. I had to do that plug in there. It's really helpful. Albert Bandura. Has anybody heard of him? Psychology folks? Al Bandura. My man, you know why? Because I was wrestling with a theoretical construct that I could use to guide my conceptualization of these programs that could be that could that could lead to a positive learning experience. But then and Bandura talks about mastery experiences. Mastery experiences. I've learned this on the inside. When somebody learns something they didn't think they could learn, or do something they didn't think they could do and it's transformative, that's transferable, meaning it can apply to other areas. It can lead to someone being more persistent, more resilient. So thank you, Albert Doran. And I also let uh, Chief send me high stuff about flow and how some experience happens, the challenge mastery kind of chart, where if they learn something and they're cool, you increase the challenge that builds the efficacy, and then you can have another transformative learning experience. I can do all of this in these other programs or sessions I conceptualize, it has nothing directly to do with educational attainment because educational attainment is way down the road. We don't talk about getting a GED or high school diploma. You're not there yet. You're the fourth, fifth, or sixth grade. We've got to get you out of middle school. But we have to have you motivated to pursue. I, I, this, is, this is something I came up with about eight years ago about, it's based on mitochondria. Yeah, I know that. Oxygen used to be the toxic substance in the atmosphere, right, for living forms. You know, right? Little biology, oxygen. What processes oxygen in our system? Mitochondria. Turns that toxic substance 
into a source of energy. This conceptualization is how to take all that capital inside jails and prisons and make it a social resource. Imagine that. Domo arigato.